Today I'm gonna to talk about the Iris Form W4 2018 version, online, married finally, jointly. Now, if this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner with Sickle Hunter Financial Advisors. Now today we're gonna to talk about married filing jointly, which has to do a lot with how do you split the allowances. Now we're gonna do the online version, but it's really easy to take that answer and put it right on the paper version to give to your employer. So go through the online version, it's a lot easier. I'll show you how to transfer it at the end so you can give it to your employer and be done with it. Now again, there's two ways really to file married filing jointly, and that's whether or not you have one job or two jobs. So that's really the big question that we're getting with married filing jointly. So let's jump onto it and see what we have. So if you go to the website, it's apps.irs.gov and you're gonna see the W4 app there. I will try to put a link at the bottom. Now again, the question here that we're having is how do you split those allowances? But the online version is gonna do that for us. If you want more information on how to fill out and how to split those allowances, check out the link in the top I'll put it right up there to our video on how to split those allowances. I'll also touch on it a little bit today so you can see what it looks like. So the first screen you're gonna get, married filing jointly. Let's go ahead and check that off. No one else can claim you as a dependent, so check no. Click continue. Now here's where you're gonna get the big change or the amount of jobs that you have. So the first question it's gonna ask is select a total number of jobs in which you and your spouse are currently or will be employed. So again, if you have a job and your spouse has a job, that's two jobs, put two. And on the next screen, if we put two, it's gonna ask us to fill out for two jobs, which is pretty straightforward. So if you have that, check it off. These next check boxes that you're looking at Check them off if they apply to you. It's gonna make the adjustment automatically, gonna ask you the right questions. So whether or not you had a job and you no longer have a job, you have a 401k or another retirement plan, that's very, very important. So if you're saving into your 401k, check that second box off. Also, if you have a cafeteria plan or health insurance, check that third box off. And we're gonna go ahead and jump all the way down. We're not gonna fill out any other dependents. This is only if you're married filing jointly and you have two jobs. That's all we're gonna look at. Click continue. All right, here's the difference. If you have two jobs, it's gonna show you two columns. If you have one job, it's gonna show you one column. That's the only difference. It's really straightforward. So let's just assume for a minute that we have a job with $50,000. Of course, go ahead and put whatever the earnings of each spouse is, and the other one, let's say, makes 30000 The next section right here, you'll see it says, enter any bonuses you expect to receive. If you're not expecting it or you don't know, and you put zero, then you can go to the third box. Now, this information on the third and the fourth boxes, these next two, you're going to need your pay stub. So your, your, your boss, your employer, your HR director, somebody's gonna be able to give you your pay stub that's gonna show you your year-to-date withholdings because the way the calculator works, it needs to know not only how much you earn, but how much you've already withheld. So that means we can withhold the correct amount moving forward. Now again, it's on your pay stub. It should show you the year-to-date numbers. Get as accurate as possible because you want those withholdings to really be as low as possible. So you're paying the least amount in taxes. So let's say we have withheld nothing. We're gonna put zero. Now the next section is how often do you get paid? Weekly, bi-weekly, or twice a month? Now, if you're getting paid twice a month, that's gonna be 24 times a year versus 26. Slight difference, but again, the more accurate you are with the calculator, the more accurate your withholdings will be. So let's put twice a month, that's 24 times a year. And then the next two, Put when you started this job, if you've worked it all year and you worked it last year, then just put January 1st. But otherwise, change that because again, it's gonna assume how often are you getting paid, when did you start getting paid, it's just gonna calculate it correctly. Click continue. Now for this example, we're gonna assume that you're taking the standard deduction because in 2018, they're a lot higher than they were in the past. 
So for married filing jointly, it's going to be twenty four thousand. If you're a single, um, it's going to be twenty four. It's going to be excuse me. It's going to be twelve thousand per person. So that's where you're getting that twelve thousand going to twenty four thousand. That's how they're calculating it. Now, if you had one job and you're married filing jointly, it's still going to be twenty four thousand. So that number is not going to change. Now, if you had more than $24,000 of itemized deductions, then you'd want to put the itemized deductions instead. But I'm just talking about how to fill out the W-4 to make it as easy as possible. And here you can see the results for 2018. And right there at the top, you can see that the total tax liability for the $80,000 year household is going to be $6,342. Now, that won't change. That won't change no matter what we do to how much we've already withheld or how much we need to withhold, that should be your tax liability if everything else is exactly the same. And then you can see it shows you exactly what to put. Now, in this case, since we've not withheld anything, it needs to withhold the maximum amount. So that's why it's saying put a zero on line five. And line five is going to be on page one of the W-4 on the paper version. And you can see for job one and job two, we need to withhold additional dollars, which is also going to be right there. So you're going to withhold an additional $560 on job one and 113 on job two. And it broke it down. There's probably a lot of different ways to do this. It's just making it as easy as possible when you're splitting your allowances to make sure at the end of the year, you've at least withheld $6,342. So that, you now if you want to put it on one versus the other, you can. You don't have to do it exactly this way, but this is the easiest way that we found to do it is doing the online calculator, take those numbers, put it on, make sure you held with the correct amount. Now, let's go back for a minute. And let's say that we started this job in the middle of the year. Let's say just June 1st. It's easy, June 1st. Click continue, continue again. Now you can see, I'm gonna zoom in here, you can see that the 6,342 is the same. It didn't matter when we earn this money. It's just changing how much we're earning on each paycheck. Because remember, if we're starting June 1st and we're still going to earn 50000 for the rest of the year, each paycheck is going to have to be larger than if we spread that out over the full 12 months. So you can see that the answer is a little different. We're still putting zero on line five, but the, num the amount that we need to withhold on each paycheck is a little different because we need to get to the 6342 by the end of 2018. So that's what it's attempting to do. Again, if we go back again, back again, and let's say that we put, let's say that for job one that we've already withheld $3,000. And for job two, we've withheld $2,000. So you can see at this last screen now, again, it's the same. It's $6,342, but the allowances, look at that. The allowances now are 10 allowances for job one and five allowances for job two in order to get the correct amount of withholdings for the rest of the year. But again, we're getting to 6,342. So using the online version is so much easier than sitting there and doing the math on the W-4 paper version, and this is gonna make it so you're not overpaying. If you did the paper version, there's a good chance that you're gonna pay too much and you're gonna withhold too much, and it's just not gonna work out for you. So this is the easiest way to do it. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.